Seamus DeMarais. Thanks a lot. Hello, hello. Everybody here okay? All right. Hey, how about a big hand for Mike, our MC? All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for joining me here today. My name's Seamus Demeray. I'm a sales tech at Nagios, and uh, this afternoon I'll be providing you with an overview of Nagios solutions and the value that they provide. And so I, uh, as a preface to this, I wanna give everybody fair warning that this is gonna be pretty high level, um, but we are gonna move quick. So hopefully that'll help everybody stay awake after lunch. <laughs> Uh, so I thought we'd uh, start out by talking about uh, things that Nagios is. And uh, most of you probably have some idea of some of the things that Nagios is. Um, but of course, there's always people at the conference as well that came here to find out more. Um, so just to start out simply, uh, we'll talk about some of the things that Nagios is. And uh, first off, it's a collection of projects. And um, Nagios Core, of course, the original monitoring and alerting solution. There's the Nagios plugins, a uh, curated collection of plugins that are used to actually check specific things and help Nagios know what a Windows server is, what a Linux server is, what a website is. Uh, there's NDO utils, there's a ton of agents. So there's a bunch of different projects. There's also a community, um, which uh, basically everybody who came to the conference is now part of the community, so welcome. Um, <laughs> And uh, there's thousands of people all over the world um, using Nagios, innovating, creating new projects. And uh, more often than not, those end up on the Nagios Exchange, which is the Nagios community site. And right now, we're, we're at almost 6,000 total projects uh, at 3,800 plus plugins. So if you want to monitor something, a great first stop is going to be the Nagios Exchange to see, hey, is there already a plugin for this? Or if you want to integrate with something, hey, maybe somebody's already developed integration tools. Um, so that's, that's a really good place to go. Uh, just a collection of really cool people from all over the world that make up the Nagios community. Uh, thirdly, Nagios is Nagios Enterprises, which is the commercial arm of Nagios. And uh, I've had the good fortune to work at Nagios for the last four and a half years. And um, I couldn't imagine a cooler group of people, a sharper group of people to work with. I mean, I, I love going to work and, and I love the company I work for. It's just, it's a cool place full of cool people. Um, and Nagios Enterprises has a variety of solutions designed to solve common IT infrastructure problems. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, so by a quick show of hands, how many people out there have ever had a problem with their IT infrastructure? <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> Double problem, all right. Um, so of course, you know, uh, it, I'm not surprised that pretty much everybody raised their hand. I mean, even somebody with a desktop at home has probably had a problem with their IT infrastructure. So the bad news is the problems are inevitable. Network links are gonna break, applications are gonna go haywire, drives are gonna fill. Um, but the good news is that Nagios can help. Uh, and in a lot of different ways. Um, first off, Nagios can help you identify and resolve outages quickly. And uh, that's really important. Just just finding out that there is an issue makes it much quicker and easier to actually resolve that issue, of course. Um, in, one of the, uh, in one of the graphics, in the uh, opening graphic for the keynote, we saw that the average cost of downtime, uh, based on a study last year, is $200,000 an hour. And I've worked with clients before who literally have services uh, in the financial sector that were so critical that the average cost of downtime was about $50,000 a second. I mean, no joke. Uh, talk about a tight check interval. <laughs> um, so of course, you're, you know, identifying and resolving them quickly is gonna help you save time and money. Um, it's gonna help you plan ahead with things like the capacity planning tool in Nagios XI, which will project future usage based on the historical data that the system has collected. It's gonna help teams collaborate. Um, Incident Manager helps people work together and uh, resolve issues, and then you've got a nice tail of the tape explaining who did what and how quickly things happen. And the other thing is you can manage your entire infrastructure. It's, you know, whether it's something physically located at your data center or something in the cloud, it could be a web asset, networking device, uh, applications, operating systems, it really doesn't matter. Uh, at Nagios, we always say you can monitor pretty much anything that uses electricity. And that's, that's no joke, I mean, uh, you really can. Uh, one way or another, as long as there's some way to find a quantifiable metric, you can monitor pretty much anything you can imagine. Um, uh, you know, servers, switches, routers, printers, bees, uh, how much paint is in a sprayer, your toaster. Uh, you know, pretty much anything can be monitored one way or another. Um, and you can also rest easy because 
knowing that if something goes wrong, someone who can do something about it is going to be alerted is critical. And it, you know, it's tough to take a day off as an administrator not knowing for certain that some other guy is gonna know about problems if they happen. Hopefully it's some other guy. Uh, that would be best case scenario, but it could also be you. Um, but at least somebody will find out about it and so you can rest a little easier. So the solutions that we're gonna talk about, and like I said, we're gonna move really quick, um, but hopefully after the presentation, you'll have a pretty good idea of the key features and the value of each of the solutions. We'll talk about Core, uh, the original monitoring and alerting tool. Uh, 411 is now available. We'll talk about the Core Student and Pro VMs, which are Nagios Core loaded onto uh, CentOS VMs with a bunch of other popular add-ons and tools that make it just very quick and easy to get started with Core. We'll talk about XI, the original flagship commercial grade monitoring, alerting, graphing, and reporting solution. We'll talk about Fusion, which gives you centralized visibility of many Nagio servers. We'll talk about uh, Network Analyzer, which uh, is NetFlow, SFlow, JFlow, Ipfix, pretty much any kind of flow data from a flow-enabled device. Incident Manager helps teams collaborate and manage uh, events. Log Server, which was rolled out one year ago and has very quickly become our second most popular solution. Uh, the feedback has been really good. I think a lot of value and utility has been found in log server, so we'll talk about that too. And then Reactor is just a cool tool and a free beta that uh, can help you automate processes. Um, so we'll start with Nagios Core, and excuse me just a moment while I take a drink of water. <clears throat> if I do this for about 15 minutes, I won't have to say very much more. Just kidding. All right, so a core, of course, is the open source monitoring and alerting engine, uh, celebrating 16 years now, so a lot of longevity, really cool project. Um, it's a scheduling and alerting platform, so uh, as I alluded to at the beginning, a core doesn't really know what a Windows machine is or a website is, but using all of these plugins, you, you, you tell core, hey, this is what it is, these are the metrics I wanna quantify, alert me when things break. Um, it's also very customizable and flexible, which is great. Again, you can check almost anything. You can expand on it. You can use the existing resources on Exchange to build it up. Um, there are millions of people using Core, and there's thousands of people contributing to the project. Uh, many of them are here. Um, like I said, it's been around since 1999, and uh, just a really cool project. With Core, though, you are configuring everything with flat text files on the command line, which I don't want to say is a bad thing, because some people love the command line. They love to just belt out host and service and command definitions and do it that way. Um, but especially for somebody just jumping into Nagios, or maybe somebody not only just jumping into Nagios, but also familiarizing themselves with the command line, uh, core can be kind of harrowing. Um, but check everything is not an actual plugin, but it might as well be. Um, and so I'll show you a couple of screenshots from core. Uh, here we're looking at our tactical overview. And so uh, Core doesn't have a configuration GUI, but it does have a web display mechanism. It does have some basic reports, and it does give you information about how, what the behavior is across the items that you're monitoring. And uh, so here we've got information about network outages, the health of our hosts and our services, and uh, various monitoring features, the monitoring engine itself. And taking a look at the left-hand submenu, you can see that there are some views and reports and things that you can look at to find out uh, essentially what's going on. The service detail, and uh, since this is a high-level presentation, I'll just explain very quickly. Uh, a host is basically anything with an IP address or a URL, uh, a switch, a router, a printer. Um, services are items you're monitoring on that host. So if you're monitoring a server, your services are probably CPU load and memory and drive capacity. Um, so this is a drilled onto a specific service, and you can see you've got some fairly detailed information about how the service is behaving, what happened last time it got checked, um, and then on the right-hand side, you can see there are actually a ton of commands that you can use to interact with the monitoring engine itself. Now, you're not going to be able to set up configuration uh, of monitoring of a particular host or service, but you can interact with the monitoring engine itself and do things like disabling checks or, or things like that. So that's the service detail. Uh, here's the new network map. Uh, this is new in Core 4.1. I think it looks really cool. Uh, you'll notice that there are actual uh, custom icons identifying the hosts themselves. And uh, in case you're not familiar with it, the network map is uh, a nice network topography diagram that's generated based on the parent-child relationships you define when you're configuring your hosts and services. So not only do you get really cool alerting logic where if the Nagios process knows it can't reach something, it won't alert as warning or critical, it'll say, hey, this is unreachable, um, but you also get this cool new network map, which I think looks really cool. And there's also the reports. So we've got an availability report, a trends report, uh, history of all of the alert activity. 
a summary of the alerts, a histogram, and then a notification report. Now the Nagios Core student and pro uh, basically make it very, very quick and easy for you to get started with Core. Um, so they are CentOS 6.7 VMs preloaded with Nagios Core. On the left you can see the uh, student VM, and that's got Core, it's got uh, PNP for Nagios graphs automatically happening, and it's got the Core Config Manager, which is a powerful configuration GUI that actually it's just a GUI and you can, you can create hosts and services, you can modify arguments, um, you can create host groups and service groups and templates. So it's a really cool tool, and especially if you're just starting out, uh, the VM is a great option because it'll give you that GUI and a way to interface with all of the configs without going to the command line. Now, the Pro version expands on that even further. Uh, it's got the vShell interface, uh, an optional Nagios interface. It's got Nagios Mobile, which gives you a mobile-optimized perspective of your, your Nagios uh, monitoring engine. And you can actually acknowledge alerts. You can see the status of your hosts and services. Uh, that's based on the Tini Nagios project uh, by uh, Hirose Masaaki. Really cool project, and Nagios Mobile is built on that. Uh, there's NSTI, Nagios SNMP Trap Interface, which makes it a lot easier to manage SNMP traps. There's NAGVIS, which will give you Visio style diagrams. Um, you can basically pick a background image and have active icons and connections indicating the status of various items. And then there's Nagios BPI, uh, which is a really cool component that allows you to monitor the health of complex processes as if they were an individual host. So maybe, you know, th there may be critical members where if this server isn't running, the process isn't going to work at all. But sometimes maybe you've got a cluster of 15 servers and really only eight need to be running for the process to work. You get that high level alert based on the health of the whole thing. Uh, so BPI is built in as well. Uh, so that's the Nagios Core Student and Pro VMs. And, and just to clarify, those are just their virtual machines. So it's not a, a source installer for a system. It's a virtual machine that's pre-installed and ready to go with all of those features. So next we'll talk about Nagios XI. Um, so this is the commercial grade enterprise class flagship monitoring and alerting solution. Uh, this is definitely our most popular solution. And it, it takes Nagios Core, which is the engine for Nagios XI, and it adds a ton of other items to it. it. It's much easier to use for new users. And so even if you're not familiar with Linux and you're not familiar with Nagios, you can jump into the system. And, and first off, it's very easy to install. You can use one of the pre-installed VMs or just use the installer. And assuming that you're running just a fresh, regular, vanilla install of RHEL or CentOS, the install is super quick and easy. Um, and then once you're in the interface, you've got monitoring wizards, uh, there's actually a help system, there's tool tips all over the interface, there's tutorial videos, and in XI5, there's actually a, a walkthrough tour for new users. So when a new user logs in, it's just gonna guide them through the interface and say, hey, this is important, this is cool, check this out, uh, which makes it a lot easier for people to get up and running quickly. And then it's got a ton of enterprise class capabilities like capacity planning and SLA reports, tools that enable you to modify things in bulk and so on and so forth. So here's a look at the wizards and dashboards. Um, there's, there's 60 plus preloaded pre wizards in Nagios XI. And with the wizards, uh, basically you just enter the IP or FQDN of what you want to monitor. You pick what items out of the comprehensive list uh, of items, uh, services that you'll want to monitor on it. You decide how often you're going to monitor it, uh, what its parent-child relationships are. You define hosts and service groups, all in just a quick step-by-step -step GUI. And boom, you've just configured monitoring of something in, in seconds. So it's a really quick and easy way to monitor common items. And um, in XI5, the wizards have actually been restructured a little bit. The list was getting so long, it used to just be a top to bottom alphabetical list. And it got to be a bit long. So one of the improvements in XI5 is actually that the wizards are now categorized. And there's also a wizard search feature. So if you want to monitor Linux, just do a quick search for Linux in the search bar, and it's going to show you all the wizards for that particular application. So uh, that's really cool. They're a very quick and easy way to set up monitoring. Uh, there's also dashboards, and these are a fully customizable uh, method that you can use to display pretty much any kind of information you want. Uh, throughout the XI interface, there's a variety of dashlets. Uh, most of them are in a list in the dashboards page, but there are some contextual ones as well. And you can add them to dashboards, arrange them as you'd like, and then as an administrator, you can also create these cool dashboards and then deploy them out to other users. So you can share your work with other people and keep them synced. So as a way to see very specific pieces of information, it's a fantastic tool for that. And then they can also be added to views. And views are basically specifically designed for, say, a network operations center. If you've got a big screen up and you just want to rotate through various important pieces of information, 
views would be the way to go. Um, they can be any URL from within Nagios XI or an external URL, and um, you can just rotate through them at a speed of your choosing, and it uh, works out to be a really nice way to just rotate through important pieces of information, including custom dashboards you've made, so there's a lot of flexibility there. Um, with reports, uh, we've got the executive summary, availability, there's an SLA report in the Enterprise Edition, uh, makes it very easy to report on uh, custom SLAs that you've defined. Uh, state history, top alert producers, the alert histogram, notifications, event log, uh, bandwidth usage, which I'll show you an example of in a moment. There's capacity planning in the Enterprise version, which like I said, that's going to enable you to project future usage in a graph based on the historical data that you've collected. Um, and that's another cool thing about XI is that it's collecting perf data in RRDs, and it's collecting state history. So it's, it's storing all of the information Nagios is collecting by default for four years, so a pretty long retention timeline. Um, and then you can actually do stuff with that data. You can visualize it. You can report on it. And then integrated with Network Analyzer, which I'll show you some examples of in a little bit, uh, you can actually do the network report and the network query report. So it kind of puts XI inside of, or uh, Network Analyzer inside of XI. With bulk modification, a really cool tool that was actually expanded in XI5 as well. Uh, you can now do things like, um, and I'll actually explain more about the, the bulk host uh, changes in XI5 in a moment. But basically what it lets you do is, a great example would be, say I wanted to change the check interval on 500 services. I could do it one at a time, which would take a really long time. Or with the bulk host mod tool, I could do it in 45 seconds. I'd basically just pick the metric, pick the services I want to modify, hit a button, and there we go. Um, so bulk host modification is really cool. Um, that's an enterprise feature as well. And then there's bulk host cloning, which basically enables me to, you can configure monitoring of a particular host and of course test it and make sure it's working and doing everything that you need it to. And then you can configure five, 10, 15, 20 of those hosts all with a few clicks just by saying, I wanna use this host I just configured as a template. Here's a list of IPs of the new devices and that's all you have to do. You just configure monitoring of a ton of them. Plus, Nagios XI has a config rollback feature, so if you accidentally configure 100 of the wrong host the wrong way, you can just roll back the configuration to just before you did it, and it's like it never happened, which is really cool, too. Um, here's an example of the bandwidth report, and I apologize. The, uh, the graphs at the top were actually updated in XI5, and I forgot to grab an updated screenshot, but this gives you a pretty clear picture. So we've got daily, weekly, monthly, and annual uh, bandwidth in and out. Um, bandwidth in in green, bandwidth out in blue. And then below in the table data, you can see annual data broken down by month. And if you click on the month name, you're drilled further down to daily breakdown of bandwidth in, out, max, and sum for each individual day. So uh, that's a really cool report too. And also keep in mind that for each interface you're monitoring, you've also got the standard customizable high charts graphs for that bandwidth data. So this is, this is kind of a consolidated view. And then if we look on the upper left, you can see that uh, you can just pick the interface from a dropdown and decide which one you want to see this report on. So that's a really nice report that's built in. Uh, so uh, XI also has auto discovery, um, and that was upgraded in XI5 as well. Uh, underlying in uh, the underlying uh, engine of auto discovery is Nmap, and uh, it was upgraded to the latest version in XI5, which um, has smarter OS detection. And one of the big things it has is the ability to throttle and say between each each uh, action that uh, Nmap takes, wait X amount of milliseconds. And you can customize that however you'd like. And actually last year, uh, for my presentation, one of the questions I got afterward was, is there a way to throttle auto discovery? And so, yes, you can now in XI5, um, but basically it's just gonna do an Nmap scan of networks and subnets that you define and uh, bring back a list of all the IPs and all of the, the open ports and all of the services running on those ports that were detected. So it's a really nice inventory tool. Um, you can do basic configuration out of auto discovery, but ultimately you're probably gonna wanna run a specific wizard for those items um, to get the you know, comprehensive private services and things like that from the item, probably using an agent or another method. Uh, there's the capacity planning, just wanted to show you an example of that. So what we're looking at here is, uh, and this is the graph on the bottom right, in blue, we've got the existing data that XI is aware of. This is the performance data that has been collected. 
And in gray, we've got what XI is predicting is likely to happen with this particular service based on what it already knows. And there's a couple of different uh, algorithms that you can choose from depending on the type of existing data. But it's a really useful tool. I mean, knowing something is about to break or that something just broke is really useful and you can do remediation in a hurry, but knowing it's probably gonna break in 30 days or 90 days can be a really useful tool. And then these can just be added to dashboards very easily. And, um, and so you can have a dashboard of critical services and just see what they're likely to do in the future. So that works out really nicely as well. But wait, there's more. Uh, XI also has the integrated databases that I talked about. Uh, it's got a back-end API, which was also improved in XI5. Uh, the API in the past has basically been designed to push data to other portals and, and uh, provide information like host and service status and so on and so forth. In XI5, it's actually been upgraded. Not only can you now make programmatic changes like creating hosts and services and modifying contacts with the API, but there is also, uh, in the help menu, an explanation of the API and how it works and how it can be used, which, which is really useful. That didn't used to be the case. Um, but now everything you need to know about how to leverage the API is actually built right into XI, so it's very easy to get started with that. Uh, easy multi-tenancy, it's a piece of cake to determine on a per-user basis what people can see and do within the interface. Uh, there's also uh, NAGVIS, which we talked a little bit about. There's Google Maps integration. There's business process intelligence. There's Nagios Mobile. And one thing that I neglected to include uh, is Graph Explorer, but that is a super cool component, um, probably one of my favorite parts of XI. And uh, the greatest part to me is the multi-stacked graph, which enables you to take, essentially, a graph of any service you'd like and layer it with as many other specific services from random hosts that you'd like to and kind of compare and contrast all of those and see uh, you know, how something being impacted impacted something else and then you can add these to dashboards and have these cool comparison uh, multi-stacked graphs. So that's built in as well. Um, new in XI5, I'll go really quick here. Um, this is live as of yesterday, but uh, the configure menu has been streamlined. It's, it's crisper, it's quicker, it's more intuitive to, to access things like the core config manager and the configuration wizards. Smarter auto discovery we talked about. The reports are now Ajax reports, so you can actually start a report for a long time frame that might take a little while, and then continue to use the interface and come back and that report, you know, basically that report will have completed itself instead of dying when you left. Um, you can also now export the reports as a JPEG. Uh, we've long had uh, PDF in all cases, and in many cases, CSV export capabilities, but now you can actually do uh, a, um, a JPEG export as well. There's menu icons for the, the critical, important parts of the interface, so if you're just jumping into XI, just look for icons next to things in the left-hand submenus, and those are probably the things you'll want to check out first, which is really useful for new users or advanced users that just want to find something quickly. Uh, collapsing search bar that can now actually find host and service groups instead of just individual hosts and services. Uh, long menus were tabbed, so a lot of the menus were just getting out of control, um, and now those are tabbed, so they're categorized and it's, it, it makes a lot more sense. Um, you can now mark specific alert types as high priority, so they'll just show up as a, a regular high priority email would, which is nice. Uh, bulk mod was enhanced, and uh, this would be uh, the bulk mod portion. Uh, commands and arguments, templates, and, and a lot of other items were added to bulk host mod to make it an even more powerful tool. The interface was modernized. Um, actually, the top bar is on the upper right of this, and um, you, can, uh, you can see just a, a kind of an idea of what that looks like. The alert stream doesn't use Java anymore, and I've done 50... <laughs> I've done 50 or 60 uh, live demos and webinar presentations, and every time I'd go to the alert stream, I'd have to fiddle around with Java. Well, now it's just going to pop like any other visualization, and when you click on it, it'll just show you the alert stream. So there's probably a few people out there that are like quietly cheering about that. Uh, one <laughs> uh, one click update of all wizards and components instead of one at a time. Uh, there's initial tour and walkthrough we talked about. AD integration is very easy now. I mean, you can bring in 10 users at once and in bulk define what their permissions are as an Agios XI user and then move on to another session and bring in other users. It's much, much more streamlined and powerful. Uh, page settings button, there's in interface API instructions. We talked about that. Uh, the config wizard defaults, which Scott talked about at some length in his uh, initial presentation, um, really powerful feature. And, um, the wizard selections are categorized, as we talked about. So that's just some of the new stuff in XI5. Uh, the change log that we got uh, Monday morning was uh, at 12-point font, single-spaced, was just about six pages. 
So that's a, it, it's a lot of changes in XI5. We're really excited about that. Hopefully you guys have a chance to try that out. Uh, so Nagios Fusion is, a, 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 it is an infinitely scalable tactical overview. Fusion is gonna provide you with one place to see many Nagios servers. You could have five or 10 or 50, and you're gonna be able to see them all in one place and see consolidated views of the various statuses being detected across your entire uh, potentially global deployment. Very easy to set up, very easy to expand and add Nagios servers to. Uh, with XI, it does some cool tricks, like you could be looking at a list of um, all uh, the, the number of hosts in a critical state on a particular server, and you click that uh, visualization, and you're clicked through right to a pre-filtered list in XI showing you that information. Um, it is a way to visualize your entire infrastructure, and that's actually why I bolded visualize, because I, I wanna make it clear, it's not a configuration tool, it's not a reporting tool, but it is an excellent way to see everything in one place and have that centralized tactical bird's eye view of what's happening across a huge Nagios deployment. You can also make dashboards and views just like you would in Nagios XI. Gives you a nice at a glance view of what's going on. Uh, here's the Fusion homepage and you can customize this dashboard to show whatever information you'd like just like you would uh, in Nagios XI. And then in the left hand menu you've got some, some uh, predefined dashboards and displays that you can use and expand upon. So just to give you an idea, like uh, on the upper left here, we've got a service health summary by Nagio server. We have four plugged into this. So it's just some real quick visualization showing you what's going on across the infrastructure. Uh, Nagios Network Analyzer is, uh, like I said, it's a, a flow collection and uh, analysis tool and um, S-Flow, J-Flow, IPFIX, pretty much any flow from any flow-enabled device can be collected by Network Analyzer and then you can run queries, you can run reports, um, you can really get some depth. So in XI, you're monitoring bandwidth in and out. Is that interface up, and, up or down? Is the network device up down? Um, but in Network Analyzer, you're able to see um, how many, actually how many packets. So like check ICMP, the, the XI ping check, is sending out test packets and, and saying, hey, I lost 20% of my packets or 50% of my packets. But in Network Analyzer, we're seeing how many packets were actually transmitted and received and from what IPs and to what IPs. Um, you've also got uh, information, you know, uh, actual byte data for the, the network traffic and so on and so forth. It's got some nice advanced reports. It's got built-in alerting, so it could be a standalone alerting platform or you can very easily feed those alerts over to XI and alert in XI and have all of your, your uh, or, or core, of course, um, and have all of your Nagios logic in place for the alerts being detected by Network Analyzer. Um, for any flow-enabled network devices, uh, with Linux, uh, you can use F-Probe to get flow data. With Windows, you can use N-Probe. And uh, so it's got dashboards, it's got reports, uh, it's very easy to set up sources. Here's uh, some cool screenshots on the bottom right. We've got a cord diagram and uh, hovering over any of those IP addresses listed in the cord diagram is gonna immediately show you what they connected to and how all of that communication interrelates. You know, what did that IP talk to? Um, so it's, it's a more real-time reporting mechanism. Integrated with XI, here's a look at the network report that you would see in Nagios XI's reports menu. And so you can do things like top talkers by source IP report, uh, top talkers by bytes, by packets. There's a network query report. In our demo machine, we have it set up to look for common botnets. So that's, that's just a quick and easy example of you could say, you know, if you see any traffic from any of these IPs, we wanna know about it right away and make some cool custom reports for that. Um, and so that's a look at one of the reports. Now, Incident Manager is, it's a nice, lightweight, ticketing and incident management system. Uh, it's very simple, it's very intuitive, and it can be very useful in that uh, you can integrate with a Nagio solution or you can integrate with pretty much any other solution and uh, incidents would be kicked off an incident manager and it expands beyond the uh, capabilities of Nagios for users to add acknowledgements and comments and uh, allows them to add uh, lots of verbose input, they can add attachments, people can work back and forth. You have a tail of the tape saying this user did this and then this admin did this and back and forth until it reached resolution. So. Um, it's, it's an easy way to organize and automate and prioritize uh, the, the events that are happening, and people can obviously collaborate and communicate. It's got some nice reports. Uh, it's got mean time to resolution. I know Scott talked about that as probably one of the most important ones, which that's a really nice report. You can see general stats, and uh, you can also, you also have a historical record of this activity, so it's not that you know, you, you really don't know what happened a year later. You've got, uh, all of this is collected, and you can go back and say, this, this problem was detected by Nagios. 
incident manager opened it up, these users did this stuff, it took this long, and then it was resolved. Uh, so that's really nice. And uh, like I said, it's very easy to integrate um, with Nagios XI. It's got a really nice API for integration with other tools. So here's a look at an actual uh, incident in Incident Manager. And uh, if we look in the upper left, we, uh, we can delete the incident, we can edit the incident. This is actually one that XI detected an alert state and then kicked off an incident in Incident Manager. Uh, if you look on the right, we can add an attachment, we can change its status, we can adjust priority levels. Um, so this is just an idea of what you would see in Incident Manager once an incident was created by the application. As far as integrating, it's very easy to set up in XI. XI just has a component that just, it's a snap to set it up. Um, you determine the forwarding thresholds, for example, um, you know, what constitutes something that should be opened up in Incident Manager. There's a lot of built-in built -in macros, um, things like type and time and so on and so forth. Um, you can automatically create incidents. And then IAM can actually uh, send updates to XI. So let's say um, the incident was fed from, incident, or from XI to Incident Manager. Somebody acknowledges that in Incident Manager, it's got a callback to XI that's gonna acknowledge it in uh, Nagios as well, which is nice. Um, and then vice versa, once uh, Nagios detects that the problem is no longer, uh, that it's changed to an okay status, it would then update Incident Manager. So it goes back and forth. Yeah, that's the HTTP API. Um, you can use it to integrate with pretty much any application, including, of course, Nagios. Uh, Log Server is a really, really cool application. Uh, it's an ELK-based log management, uh, collection, archiving, dashboarding, querying, and alerting platform. Uh, so that's Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And um, it basically can collect data from any machine-generated log source. So it's you know, very flexible. You can use something called Grok filters, which is something Logstash uh, supports, to uh, filter the incoming data from almost anything, be it a, a proprietary custom application or something very common, and tag the individual elements of it so that you can quickly query it and say, I want to look for this particular item. Um, at this particular time period. So it's really nice, it's very easy to alert as well. It's got its own built-in alerting, much like Network Analyzer. But uh, you can also alert via SNMP traps. It's got an alerts page. You can feed to Nagios with NRDP if you'd like to do it that way. Or you can execute a script, just like a Nagios event handler, um, or kick off a reactor chain. And of course, Windows, Linux, network devices, applications, pretty much anything, again, that uses electricity and generates logs uh, can be leveraged in Log Server. So here's a look at the log server dashboard. Uh, this was actually created by Scott Wilkerson. Uh, this is the better Apache dashboard, and it's one of my favorites. Just gives you an idea of uh, the flexibility of the dashboards. You can create uh, individual panels showing all manner of information and graphs and pie charts and, and obviously map data. Um, so this is a really cool example. You'll see a few dashboards on the Nagios Exchange, and if you make a cool one, I'd encourage you to, to add it to Exchange so other people can leverage it they can be very easily exported and dragged back into the system. So, and I know that uh, Eric here has also created some really cool dashboards for Log Server. Uh, very easy to cluster. When you spin up a new Log Server instance, it says, hey, is this a new install? Or do you want to add this to a cluster? If you want to add it to a cluster, you just enter the key for your cluster, and boom, they're suddenly working together. And that gives you redundancy. It gives you load balancing. Uh, what Log Server does is it takes all of the log data for each day and makes an index out of it, and then splits that into five shards, and as long as you're running two instances, you've always got a primary and a replica. So if a machine dies, you still have another one. And if you're running three or more, then you have a primary and a replica. And if one of those machines goes down, a new primary or a replica is automatically created. So it's got some really nice redundancy built in. Uh, clustering, again, is very easy to do. Uh, for backup and maintenance, it's also very easy to determine, uh, and this is a look at that particular section of the administration menu, it's also very easy to determine how long it holds onto those indexes. Um, they can be left open, which means they're queryable, but they're using more resources than just drive space, or they can be closed, which means that they're still present in the cluster, but they're no longer using any resources other than drive space. You'd have to open them to query them again, but it's a nice resource saving measure. You can determine when they're deleted. You can also very easily feed data to, a, uh, uh, to an external share if you'd like to. So maybe you don't wanna keep six months worth of data in your cluster, which would take up an awful lot of space in most cases, but you might need that data a year or two years later. Maybe you get audited and you've got to go back to 2012 and say, hey, this did or didn't happen. You could have all that data somewhere else just sitting and ready to be queried later on if you brought it back into Log Server. 
Uh, 2.0 brought some cool changes. Um, that LDAP AD user import was added to log server as well. Elasticsearch and Logstash were upgraded. Internationalization is now present. So uh, there's a variety of languages other than English that you can run the interface in. Uh, there's a system status tar. If you're an XI user, you might be familiar with uh, XI system profile, which basically just condenses a bunch of very useful information for troubleshooting. And now that's supported in log server as well, very similarly. Um, and now you can add and sort from within table views, which is really nice. And our reactor is in a free beta. It's a really cool automation tool. Um, it's basically like uh, a way to uh, create scripted actions into blocks and then use those blocks modularly to create chains of automations. And uh, the screenshots there are just showing you a few of the default things that are built in to help you create these complex automations. So it's, it's really nice. Um, it's all GUI based and it's a great way to just string together a bunch of uh, automated uh, actions and then make those happen. Uh, kick those off from Nagios or Log Server or another application. And uh, some use cases, uh, you could, yeah, you could automatically handle network problems, uh, dynamically respond to security events and, and kick off a chain to take care of that, um, deploy software to new network machines, auto scale your cloud infrastructure, um, and zipping right along, time is flying. I did want to talk real quick about NCPA because I think it's a really cool agent. Uh, it's the Nagios cross-platform agent, and it's cool because it works on Windows, it works on Linux, Mac OS X. It'll monitor actively, it'll monitor passively. It has that cool heads-up display on the right where you can see real-time graphs of the metrics you're monitoring. And a lot of the power of NCPA comes in the API, which once you get the swing of the API, is very, it's a check API. It's a very, very powerful way to help you um, define the commands for the things that you want to check via the sweet API that's built into it. So that's definitely one to check out. Plus, it's typically extremely easy to install. Uh, some agents can be a little fiddly, but NCPA tends to just work, uh, at least in my experience. So that's really cool. Nagios also offers services um, in addition to the solution. So there's training, uh, there's a live training that is, if you want to get up to speed with Nagios, that's the way to go. It's fantastic. There's a basic and an advanced course. And um, Mike Weber, who runs Spider Tools, the official Nagios training partner, is actually here at the conference. Uh, extremely knowledgeable, really cool guy, great company. And uh, to get up to speed, the training is a fantastic option. We do offer Nagios core support as well. So if you want a safety net for your core installation, we offer that as well. Um, we offer, we've got a worldwide partner ne network that can help with uh, implementation consulting. So if you want somebody to actually help you streamline your existing install or roll out a brand new one, we've got people who can help with that. We also offer free quick starts. So if you're trying one of our solutions and you'd like a tech to just remote in and work with you for an hour, that, that's no problem. We can offer that to you at no charge and uh, that way you can get some hands-on help either getting set up or configuring a few items or even resolving some tricky issue that you haven't been able to fix. Uh, we also do custom development. And then the certification, there's a professional and there's an admin certification and that's actually free with your conference attendance. So if you wanna become a Nagio certified admin or professional, uh, there's a link in your, um, in your program guides and you just go to the link, take the test and, and you can get certified for free, which is really cool. Uh, quick recap, we talked about all of this stuff. We're running out of time. <laughs> And uh, getting started, a great way to do that is to come to the World Conference. So nice work, everybody. You guys actually did a really cool thing coming here. Uh, it's great to see you. Uh, more presentations, and you'll notice in your program guides, there's actually an icon next to each presentation or multiple icons indicating what that presentation will be about. Uh, your conference USBs have a ton of uh, virtual machines and other information on them. We've got fully functional 60-day trial versions of everything. Um, there's quick starts we talked about, and then the jump starts you missed today, but tomorrow uh, from 10 to 12, you can just go into a room full of Nagio support techs and they can help you with pretty much whatever you need. So that's a really good resource. We've also got the forum, which is a fantastic place to get direct help from the community and the Nagio support team. That's at support.nagios.com forward slash forum. Uh, your program guides have a ton of information about the solutions and of course, what's gonna be in what track for the rest of the conference, so you can kind of scope out what you might like to see. Uh, and then Nagios.com has information about all of the various solutions and services that we offer. Um, so with that, I'd like to say thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys are awesome. And uh, now I'll open it up for questions. Should have a couple of minutes left in case anybody has one. Uh, just go ahead and raise your hand and Mike will bring the We've mic over uh, to you. We've got plenty of time for questions, so. Got any questions? Thanks, everybody.
The new XI5, like, are there any improvements in offline installation? Uh, actually, offline installation? Yes. Um, yeah, there, there actually is. It's uh, still technically in an experimental beta, um, but there is an RPM offline option that's available for XI. Uh, I don't know that that package has been updated for five yet. I don't know that off the top of my head. Uh, but there is currently an offline option. Uh, if you actually, uh, we can talk after this, and I can get you a link, or you can just do a quick search online for uh, Nagios XI offline, and it'll give you a link to all the RPM data. Um, so. And coming to lock server, like uh, when we are indexing data, do you have an option to mask the sense to data? Oh, like obfuscate certain data from certain users? Uh -huh. uh, that's, I, I'm sure that that's a feature request that's in place um, for, for maybe user A can see this type of data, but user B cannot. Currently, all users in log server are going to see everything. So um, eventually, the multi-tenancy will evolve to the extent that user A only sees these particular sources or this particular, uh, these particular fields from the incoming data, but that's not currently present. And I, I couldn't give you a timeline for when it'll be available, but I know a lot of people have asked about that. Thank you. Any more questions? Why is Reactor still beta? You know, that's a great question. <laughs> Oh, that's good news. You know, it's, it's in a free beta. Uh, I think that especially over the last year, year and a half, a lot of focus has been on improving the existing stuff. Um, you know, Log Server came out a year ago. We wanted to make sure that that continued to evolve. And XI5, I know the dev team has put a tremendous amount of work into. So I think, of course, you know, if it's something that becomes a commercial solution, um, then there's a, a certain impetus to, to improve it, you know, dramatically over time. Um, but right now, it's just awesome. It's a really cool solution. And uh, get it while it's hot, I guess. I don't know how much longer it'll be in a free beta. But yeah, I think it's one of the undersung heroes of the Nagios world, to be honest. Cool. So you found a lot of value in it? Yeah. 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 We've, we've basically replaced all of our event handlers with reactor chains. Awesome. Uh, so it works out great. Cool. Cool. Yeah, thanks for that comment. So yeah, you heard it here. Reactor's the hot item. Check that out. It's in a free beta. <laughs> Any more questions? All right, if there's no more questions, nice round of applause for Seamus Demeray. Thanks so much, everybody.